Let's do a self-inquiry meditation on experience is Atma. Let the weaker sit comfortably. Allow the eyes of the weaker to close. You simply stand beyond the weaker as the witness. Notice the weaker dissolves. Its waking world also dissolves. Simply the witness remains. Notice the silence of the witness. Notice that even the witness dissolves and disappears into the silence. Notice that only an alive, empty stillness remains behind once the witness dissolves and disappears. Peacefully abide as the alive, empty stillness. Recognize its flavor. It is of the flavor of nothingness and nobodiness. Notice that the I is a thought that keeps re-emerging from the luminous void and keeps merging back into it. Observe the dance of the I. The I 
is a mere thought, not an experience. Recognize the moment the I thought emerges, it triggers the illusory thought of somebodyness or somethingness. Recognize the moment the I thought merges back into the void, it triggers the idea of nothingness or nobodiness. Is it your direct seeing that nothingness and somethingness both are illusory ideas? Is it your direct seeing that nobodiness and somebodiness? are illusory ideas. Is it your direct seeing that ideas are simply knowledge? not an experience. Is it your direct seeing that thoughts are simply knowledge, not an experience? that from which the I arises is the knowledge of nobodiness. That into which the I disappears is the knowledge of nobodiness. The I itself is the knowledge of pretend somebodiness. The pretend somebodiness tendency of the I needs a pretend somethingness to escape from the truth. The higher truth of nobodiness and nothingness. thingness 
Is it your direct seeing that the I tries to escape the truth of no I? Is it your direct seeing that the I is a thought and it projects another pretend something thought to keep itself busy? The pretend something thought can be either a perception, a sensation, a feeling or simply a verbal or visual thought. Anything suffices to keep the I thought away from the truth. The sensation of a body created by the combination of perception of sight and perception of touch is simply a pretend thought. Similarly, the world thought created by the combination of the perceptions of sight, sound, smell, taste and touch is also merely a pretend thought. The knowledge of the body is pretend somebodiness. The knowledge of the world is pretend somethingness. Both are weapons of the I to continue its drama of pretend somebodiness. The truth is, all is simply knowledge, not an experience. Because pretend somebodiness Dreaming of a pretend somethingness cannot be called an experience. A dream is always thought of. It is never experienced. Is it your direct experience that 
a pretend somebodyness, dreaming of a pretend somethingness is only thought and not an experience? Is it a direct realization that a dream is merely thought and not an experience? Is it a direct realization that a thought exists only at the mental level? Is it a direct realization that for an experience to be called an experience, it must exist at a level other than the mental level. Is it a direct realization for you that all thoughts, feelings, sensations and perceptions are merely mental phenomena, simply knowledge and not an experience? Is it your direct realization that the I projects the dream tiger, accepts it to be true, and assumes it to be a real experience? Has it become your direct realization that the same I projects the waking knowledge similar to the dream knowledge? Are you able to see the waking world to be only knowledge and not an experience? Let's take this one step higher.
the dream world objects are never experienced, only thought of. That which is never experienced and only thought of cannot be said to be existent. Hence, the dream world is non-existent because it is made up only of perception, sensation, thought and feeling, all of which are pretend somethingness. You never say that the dream tiger ever existed. You know that the dream tiger was not. It never existed, not even for a moment. If something never existed, was only thought of, how can its knowledge be said to be existent? How can there be the knowledge of something that does not? exist. Therefore, there was only knowledge, period. Not the knowledge of this, not the knowledge of that. Only knowledge. Only knowledge. Only knowledge. Are you able to draw a parallel between the dream state and the waking state? Are you able to see that the waking world objects are never experienced, only thought of? Are you able to see that there is nothing other than feelings, sensations, perceptions and thought? All of these are simply thought. Hence, the waking world object is only a thought not an experience. Is it your direct seeing that a thought 
can only be thought of and never experienced as an independently existing object out there. If an object is not experienced ever, it must be non-existent. Then how can the waking world objects be said to be existent when they cannot be experienced. Slowly, open your eyes and look around your room. The room that you believe you are seeing right now is only a mental phenomenon. The sense of sight that claims to be seeing the room is also a mental phenomenon. This means that the object called the room is non-existent as an object. It is non-existent as an object belonging to an external physical world. It is a mere thought. At a superficial level, the so-called waking world object called the room is simply the knowledge of a room because it is a mental phenomenon. But on a deeper dive, it is seen that the object called the room is non-existent. It is only a thought. How can there be knowledge of a non-existent thing? Therefore, it is not even the knowledge of an object that is experienced, but knowledge itself. All is knowledge, simply pure knowledge. 
not knowledge of this, not knowledge of that. Simply knowledge. Thus, experience proves that the entire objective world is knowledge and knowledge alone. Dive deeper into it and see. Knowledge and knowledge alone is simply conscious, alive, beyond somethingness and nothingness, beyond somebodyness and nobodyness. That conscious, alive, beyond is the Atma. Is it your direct realization that there is only knowledge? Are you able to recognize the Atma? Can you see it all as simply knowledge, not knowledge of an object, not as an experience, but simply knowledge? Devoid of a knower, devoid of the process of knowing. Devoid of the known. Simply knowledge. Simply the Atma. Simply knowledge. Simply the Atma. Simply knowledge. Simply the Atma. <laughs>